guys, welcome back to our channel Get Play Zone. This is the 29th video in the series of operating system. In this video, we are going to see an example problem on multi-level queue scheduling. So, in the previous video, we have understood how multi-level queue scheduling works. So, if you haven't watched that video, make sure you watch before coming to this video. So, let's get started with the example problem. As you can see here, we have four processes P1, P2, P3 and P4. And their arrival times and burst times are given here. And we have two queues. So all these four processes are assigned in this two queues respectively, Q1 and Q2. P3 belongs to Q2. Rest all the process belongs to Q1. Now we are supposed to see how the process gets executed. But to know that, we have to build the Gantt chart. But before that, let's write everything. The question mentions that Q1 is having more priority than Q2. The process in the Q1 have more priority than the processes in the Q2. So whenever we are executing, we will just give more importance to Q1 processes. And according to the question, Q1 follows round robin scheduling algorithm with the time quantum value of two units. And Q2 follows first come first of scheduling algorithm. So to solve this problem using multi-level queue scheduling algorithm, you need to know how round robin works and how first come first serve works. These two scheduling algorithms I have explained in the previous videos. So make sure you watch them if you don't have any idea. So as you can see, I'm noting down all the process. Q1 consists of P1, P2 and P4. And Q2 consists of P3. Also, you can see that the arrival time of the first three processes are at 0. So P1, P2 and P3 are available from the unit time 0. But P4 will come only at 10 unit of time. At the time 10 unit, P4 will be available. Till then, we only have this three process. So, starting with the Gantt chart, at 0, we have three process P1, P2 and P3. But as per the priority rule, we have Q1 greater than Q2. So, in the Q1, we have two process P1 and P2. P1 is having the burst time of four units and the time quantum is two. So, 4 minus 2, 0 to 2, P1 will be executed. Now, 4 minus 2, still two units of time of process one is left. So moving ahead, we have P2, which is also from Q1, which is available because the arrival time is zero. So P2 have three units of burst time. So and the time quantum is two. So three minus two is equals to one is left from two to four, P2 will be running. Again, still Q1 is not free. Q1 still consists of P1 and P2 left. So for the remaining two units of burst time, with the quantum 2, we will run P1 from 4 to 6. Now we have P2 with burst time 1 and the time quantum is 2. Just because we only have 1, 6 to 7, 1 unit of time P2 will run. Now you can see P1 is completed and P2 is completed. We are left with two process that is P3 and P4. Here in P3 and P4, the time right now is 7. P4 will be available at 10 units of time. So till we get P4, we can go to Q2. We know that Q1 is greater than Q2, but Q1 is empty now. P1 and P2 are completed. P4 will not be available till 10. Therefore, we can check with Q2, that is P3. So, the burst time of process 3 is 8 units. And we know that process 4 will come at 10. So, right now it is 7. So, 10 minus 7 is equals to 3. So, for 3 units, so from 7 to 10, 3 units, P3 will be executed and the leftover burst time is 8 minus 3 that is equals to 5. Now that we have reached 10 units of time, P4 is available and P4 belongs to Q1. Since Q1 is greater than Q2, we are left with two things P3 and P4 with burst times of 5 and 5. Q1 is greater than Q2 so we will continue with P4 and then we will continue with P3. So generally according to the time quantum that is 2, we are supposed to do 2 and also we can't go to Q2 that is P3 until we complete Q1 that is P4. Therefore, we will do 10 to 15 that is P4. So, 10 to time quantum 2, 10 to 12, P4 will be executed. Again, 12 to 14, P4 will be executed. Again, 14 to 15, P4 will be executed. So, that is 5 units of time. So, as you can see, this will also be completed. Then, we will be left with only 5 units of P3. So, the 5 units of P3 will be going here. 15 to 20. So this is how we draw the Gantt chart for this multi-level scheduling algorithm using round-robin scheduling algorithm and first-come-first-serve algorithm.
So I hope you understood how we drew the Gantt chart. If you have any doubts, make sure you comment below. Now I'm going to give you an homework. Now that we got the Gantt chart, I'm also giving you the formulas for calculating the turnaround time and waiting time. I want you to calculate the average turnaround time and average waiting time and comment below. So all these things you can find. The exit time you can take from the Gantt chart. So P1 is completed at six. and p3 is completed at 20 so by this you can draw the gantt chart so from this you can note the exit times and then you can calculate so if you like this video make sure you like it share it and subscribe to our channel get play soon thank you so much for watching till the end bye bye